If someone told me that they could have it all for under $750, I'd probably turn around and say, check this out. Because I can't believe the value we have here on the table. That's right, we've got a Ryzen 5 3600. This is a six core, 12 threaded beast of a CPU coming in at $190. And then besides that, we've got an M.2 one terabyte drive. These can be had for under $100, making them great with the motherboard that we're using here today, A320. Now make no mistake about it, there's going to be some A320 haters out there. They're gonna tell you, don't buy an A320 motherboard. You've gotta get a B450. But from all the testing I've done, it mates perfectly with the Ryzen 5 3600. You still get that precision boost overdrive too. Your memory speeds, especially with a sweet spot like today's 16 gigabyte kit that we're using that comes in at around $80 and has RGB and has 3000 megahertz XMP profiles. We're still going to be getting the most out of this motherboard in that we won't need to go spend the extra money on a B450. Make no mistake about it, B450 motherboards will have extra features but they will cost double the price of this motherboard generally. And in today's build, we're not gonna be extracting any more performance out of a B450 than we will be out of today's build, since we're going to be using the included cooler with the Ryzen 5 3600, which goes perfectly with Precision Boost Overdrive 2. So today's build is going to be something that anyone can build. This is gonna be a full PC gaming build guide with the best value that money can buy. But the last few components to go over, 550 watt power supply, that's what we're using here today. You can get away with a 400 watt power supply in today's build if you're using the same components, but make sure it's from a reputable brand. I'd personally opt for a 500 watt gold power supply from Rosewill. These can be had at the market price of $45 at the moment. And then behind that, we have the graphics card, the most important part for gamers. We're going with a 1660 Super, which can be had for about $230. Great price performance. It also stays cool and quiet and has the latest encoder from Nvidia if you want to get into streaming with this whole build and not get any stuttering. And of course, last component to talk about here is the case. We've gone with a budget case and added in three ring fans of our own from a local manufacturer. This only set me back 57 Aussie dollars. However, if you're in the States, you can get cases with fans already pre-installed to save you the hassle. Some of my favorites at the moment, looking at market prices, would be the V200 for $65, or the Fractal Design case going for $55. I'll put some links for all these components in the description below, but with that aside, let's get building on our budget rig and see what numbers we can get for 750 US dollars, or if you come from the land down under, right on that 1,000 Aussie dollar. First thing you're going to want to do is put your motherboard on the bum. What's going on? Ding, ding. Though, on a serious note, we put our motherboard on the box here. And one thing with this CPU is you want to grip it by the sides. Make sure you don't touch these pins right here. And the reason being is because on the Ryzen 3000 series chips is these pins can bend a lot easier than they otherwise would on the Ryzen 2000 series and whatnot. So once we do that, we can push our lever up on the side here and then make sure our little arrow aligns with the actual socket. And we just drop that in the socket like that and then close the lever on the side. Next up, we will unscrew the four screws on these two latches right here, and then we're going to install our Ryzen CPU cooler. So what we'll need for this is a screwdriver, and then we unscrew these four screws as such. And now we just place our Ryzen CPU cooler on top of the CPU, and make sure the screw holes align with the screws, and then we just simply re-screw our CPU cooler back down, diagonally first, and then the opposite diagonal after that. As for the tension of the screws, this Ryzen CPU cooler is automatically going to stop when there's too much tension, so you don't have to worry about over-tightening. Next up, we have our memory, and this is very simple. We just undo these two notches at the top. Some motherboards may have another two notches here to undo, and then we line up 
the short end with the short end of the pins inside and then match that to the socket and then insert our ram as such and then push in on both sides like I'm doing here and then do that with the other stick and then finito. Now, if you're going to go with an M.2 drive, that's these small ones right here, then installing these will actually save you running a power cable and also an additional SATA cable in your build. So not only will it make your build use a little bit less power, but it will make it look a bit cleaner. However, there is a trick to this, and that is when you first install your drive, you have to slot it in. And then after that, you may have to have a screwdriver, a Phillips head with a smaller tip. Since the M.2 screws required for screwing down the M.2 drive usually require a thin insert. Though after that, you are now ready to finally install all your components inside the case. And now after prepping the motherboard, CPU, RAM and M.2 drive, we now should prep the case before we insert that motherboard into it. So basically this involves setting up any additional fans you wish to install in the case and in this case, particularly, we're putting an extra three red LED ring fans inside. And then after that, install your drives. So if you've got an additional hard drive, a 3.5 inch, or you're using a SATA SSD that's 2.5 inch, this is the time to install it along with any extra cables. And then after that, we install our power supply. This may need to be mounted at either the top or the bottom. It shouldn't matter where it's mounted in a case as long as your cables are long enough, hence the reason to buy a decent power supply that has long enough cables. Now for screws, there's generally three types of screws that come with any PC case. There's little, medium, and then super thick. Those thick ones, they'll kind of remind you of some of those photos you see on Instagram. But for inserting the power supply and also our hard drives, we use the medium type screws. For the fans, we use the thick ones. And then for our motherboard and SSDs, we usually use the small ones. Though sometimes motherboard screws can need the medium sized screws. So it's important to quickly check before we insert our motherboard. Though in this case, quite literally, we can use the smaller screws since they fit perfectly. Now it's the phase for putting everything together and plugging everything up. And there's some very important things I'm gonna note here where you have to be careful. Uh, so the first thing is putting your motherboard in the tray. Make sure all the screws underneath the motherboard match up with the holes on the motherboard in that all the screws line up and you can screw the whole motherboard down. If there's any of these screws in the wrong position, this can cause your whole system to not boot. It may even possibly cause damage. So do be careful with this phase. Make sure all your screws are where they should be. If you need to unscrew the gold screws, then please do so before you put the motherboard in and match them up where they are going to go. Also be sure to insert your motherboard's input output shield before you start installing the motherboard. So now it's time to screw down our board. I usually like to have the case facing top down so gravity can help us and not have anything shift or move while we're doing this. Another important thing is after we screwed down the motherboard, we then have to connect our cables. And now one important thing is to make sure you don't bend your PCB while connecting any of these cables. For instance, my motherboard 24 pin doesn't have necessarily a whole lot of support behind it since this is a weird sized A320 board. So I put my finger underneath to give it a bit of support while I'm pushing down the 24 pin. And now after we've connected our CPU connector up the top left of the board, the motherboard 24 pin at the right hand side, as well as the USB 3 front out and also USB 2 front outs here, then we can then start to put on our HD audio, which is down the bottom left hand side, and also our front input output power and HDD LED light connectors, which I'll put a simple diagram up for you guys in the case of the motherboard I'm using, so you can quickly connect these connections and then be ready for the final phase. And now we're at the final phase where we install our graphics card. And so in order to do this, we have to make sure the PCIe bracket at the rear of the case is also free and there's no additional encumbered parts. And in this case, we actually have a shield protecting the uh, graphics input output section. So we're gonna take that off and then insert our graphics card and then screw it off. And then simply connect your PCIe six pin or eight pin connectors and we are ready to do some cable management. 
And now it's time for cable management. And depending on where you go and who you listen to with cable management, you're gonna get a few different answers, I feel. Some people like to spend a lot more time and make sure every zip tie is used and also every single zip tie point is used and cable management's impeccable. Me personally, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I like to be as, how shall we say it, efficient as possible. And so how I do this is I make sure any of these holes at the back are clear from cables. And so that's going to look messy at the front if that's showing through. So what I do now is I get zip ties. I usually use about five to 10 zip ties on any build I'm doing. And then I like to quadrant off any uh, chunk of cables and group them together that is obvious and then zip tie those off. And once I'm done zip tying off the obvious sections of cables, I then bring through the final cables from the front that have slack and zip tie them off as well. And so what we have essentially from the front of the case is something that looks very clean. Airflow is not going to be obstructed. And at the back of the case, you're going to have something that still is easily manageable. Though of course, it's not going to look as good from the rear of the case as guys who spend a bit more time on this section. Though it's finally time to put both side panels on and boot up our PC for the first time. And now it's time to install Windows 10 on our computer. And for this, we just have to download the creation tool from Microsoft's website. I'll put the link in the description below and we'll also need a flash drive USB that's eight gigabytes or bigger. And so once we've put the flash drive in, we can load up the tool and with a few clicks of the button, we'll have a Windows 10 installation USB disk ready at our disposal. We can plug that in along with our other components and cables, turn the PC on, and we're ready to install Windows 10. Though, what if you don't have a Windows 10 Pro key? Well, today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered for 13 USD after you use the coupon code TYCSK on checkout. You can get yourself a single end user license, that is, the legit kind of keys, for 13 USD using the link in the description below and the coupon code at checkout. After checkout, you'll then get your key. You can then activate Windows with it. And after that, you'll no longer have the Windows activation logo in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and you're ready to start playing games. And there we have it, a PC that can play all the latest titles at 1080p and even 1440p. Now, the great thing about today's budget build is that it's just a perfect synergy between budget and still giving out a really nice experience. And on top of that, we don't have to do very little tweaking at all. For instance, the only thing you would want to do with this PC is go into the BIOS by pressing the delete or F2 key and then locking in your XMP profile and then saving and exiting. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Other than that, you're going to have a great gaming experience. You're gonna have high, smooth, 
FPS, and more importantly, you're gonna have large amounts of storage with SSD storage to store all your games, quickly load them up, and play games with your friends stutter free. This is what it is all about here at Tech Yes City with any kind of budget build that we do on the channel. And the great thing about today's build is, even though we did cookie cut a little bit, we still came out with a build that looks phenomenal and also has a decent amount of airflow. I was surprised for the budget that I put this together. We had those ring fans and they actually did a decent job of passing air through the case. So there's no need to remove the side panel, even in the midst of summer and you don't have aircon on, it's still gonna cool down your components absolutely fine. Now, another great thing about today's build is that if we want more graphical power, then all we have to do is change the GPU in the links that I'll put in the description below for you guys. So say for instance, you wanna go with an AMD GPU that's a little bit more powerful, like a 5700 or even a 5700 XT, then you can just change out that for the 1660 Super that we used here today. Another thing too, is if you wanna go with a more powerful NVIDIA graphics card, then put in something like a 2060 Super or 2070 Super. Though if you are going for a super high-end graphics card, be advised that you may wish to change out the power supply to something like a 650 watt, just to be safe. Though with all that out of the way, today's system with the Ryzen 5 3600, six cores, 12 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, and the 1660 Super did a phenomenal job. And as we said in the intro, the A320 motherboard is absolutely perfect for this kind of build. The motherboard is going to pair perfectly with this six core 12 threaded CPU. Now make no mistake, you're not gonna have a lot of upgrade options on an A320, but in say three years time when you're ready to upgrade your PC, you can pretty much just sell this whole unit as a complete unit. And since it looks good and performs well, it's going to be an easy sale. So there it all is guys, great value, low noise, good temperatures, and also a good aesthetic. If you guys are digging what today's build is about, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And now with that out of the way, we've got today's question of the day, which comes from Robert Von Hayden. And they say, great video, though could you please link where you purchased your LED strips? Thank you. And they're actually referring to the video, I'll put the link up here, where we did a used PC for very cheap. It was in USD terms about 55 US dollars and it could still play games reasonably well. However, in that video, we used one meter LED strips that use a Molex connection and they're a single color, which what I'm gonna do now is add one to this build that we did here today and show you what it looks like with an LED strip inside. And these things only cost a dollar. So I'll go back to that video, replace the link for you. And then I'll put the link for a $1 LED strip in today's video too, as well as all the other links that we used here today. And also don't forget, if you need to get a cheap Windows 10 Pro Key license, then be sure to check out today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, and use that coupon code TYCSK. With that out of the way, if you guys have any questions or comments about today's video as well, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. And of course, if you've made it this far and then you're enjoying that enthusiast tech content and you're not subbed already, you may wish to consider subbing, ringing that bell, and I'll see you in the next tech video very soon, which we've got a very interesting one coming up. So stay tuned. It's all about that value here at Tech S City, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.